Good morning, folks. Yesterday was the first day without a morning news in years. Holidays, weekends, 365 days a year until yesterday. Our second child, Noah Athen Davidson, was born. He's doing well. And for those who were eager to hear, my amazing wife Kat took no drugs, had no epidural, and had an incredible water birth riding nothing but her own strength. Kind of makes what I do look easy. Anyway, we're kicking off over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last 24 hours on our star and 193 angstroms. Not much happening as we've got a big dark coronal hole turning in, no flashes or eruptions, so solar flaring is low and expected to stay there as the sunspot situation isn't blank, but it is without any significant magnetic complexity or flare potential. Solar wind telemetry from Discover, purple particle speed dropping out as the coronal hole stream wanes away, and we're back to calm after only the briefest of geomagnetic storms. The reverberations are clearing, and the magnetometer resumes normal smooth curves along with the electron flux back up off the floor and flowing smoothly. We do expect more solar wind towards the middle of the week as this coronal hole has more than a 99% chance of hitting us with its solar wind stream. Before that, though, we have a short-term peak in earthquake watch. We begin that with a horse of a different color, however. All those Mexico and Guatemala earthquakes last week were likely leading to Fuego's eruption yesterday. They do expect the ash to reach the capital. Let's go a bit south of there for an eclipse. It's happening today, and it's not a major one and only visible to this part of the world, but if you're in Uruguay, southern Chile, eastern Argentina, and even southeastern Brazil, you have about two hours to get outside and make sure you can see. The sunrise won't have long to wait before the eclipse begins. Hopefully some of those tier one scopes down there will get a shot or two. And speaking of celestial events, it is worth noting that March brings sharp contrast to February's lack of relevant geometries. Earth, Venus, the Sun, and Mercury all dancing in and out of alignments next month. Now let's jump way out to the large Magellanic Cloud. We're zooming in on a supernova first captured in 1987, but which remains perhaps the most amazing deep space feature we've ever seen. Since 1987, our technology has improved slightly, and we now have a terrific look at the primary ring and the peripheral ones. We've combined visible radio X-ray light to see what is really happening there and within the structure, including how it lights up as the supernova blast reaches the ring. They've also been able to use the slight changes in depth visibility via time and different cameras used to see into and through the structure, and this 3D visualization is linked on that article as well. Let's come now to Pennsylvania. Yesterday's storms ripped through there and into New Jersey thereafter. There was wind, there was hail, and there was flooding. Trees down, cutting power, and cutting off roadways as well. Today we do get a brief break, but it's not going to last too long. We come to the wind map, a big low over the east is pushing the storms offshore, and tonight should be a lighter go all around. But as we get into tomorrow, we see powerful rainstorms heading for Southern California once again, and the Gulf states will need to have eyes open for a convergence as well. Europe, top story is in the North Atlantic for you. It is the arms, and it has quite the reach inland as you can see there, not sleeping on the Mediterranean low either. Website members, the guys pulled off the podcast without me yesterday, and if you haven't seen the most three or four deeper look episodes, it will be well worth the 15 to 20 minutes you spend over there. We've got the rest of the world's pressure and radar forecast, a null school wind and water run, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.